We haven't burned a place down yet. So I think if we can survive uh, Tucker holding one when he's like three, I think we can manage. Uh, but uh, in our traditional fashion, we uh, oftentimes have special music during our Christmas Eve service uh, from y'all. Uh, there will be congregational singing as well, as well as a wonderful message that the Lord will give me, I hope, sooner rather than later. Uh, so, but uh, if you would like to be part of that special music, uh, I need you to talk to myself, not to Amy, to me, okay? I'm the, the list holder uh, for this one. And I need to know simply this, I need to know who and what you're singing, playing, etc. okay? Um, that way I can put it in the bulletin right for that night. And so that way we don't have anybody overlapping. And if we only get one or two, then I might have to rethink everything. But we'll see. Okay? Well, thank, well, thank y'all. No, yeah, you can't sneak it this year because I'm here every week. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of Christmas things, thank you, Steve. Uh, if you took a tag last week for the family, they need to be back next week. Okay? If it's not back next week, it ain't going to them. Okay? It's, it's really that simple. I've had people bring stuff in like Wednesday, and I said it was due on Sunday. It didn't make the cut, and it ended up sitting in the church for a year. So let's not use the church as a storage shed. We don't have a lot of room as it is. Uh, so with that, let's pray. Uh, would you stand with me as we pray? Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for you are lifted high. And Lord, may this morning, may we sing your praises. May we sing of how you are good, of how you are wonderful, of how you love us, and how wretched we are. <laughs> Father, I ask that we would truly love you uh, with a renewed passion this morning. Change us. Work on us. May we leave this building this morning. May we leave having come together as your church changed. Not by each other but by your power, by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, would you sing this morning with me, O come, all ye faithful. So if we're going to adore him, Christ 
the Lord, then we need to make like some angels. And we need to be singing His glory. We need to be singing glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And let's sing, hark, the herald angels sing. I was pondering whether to have praise time or prayer time this morning or something else. And uh, I'll be completely and utterly honest with you. Is it? Okay. I'll be completely and utterly honest with you. We have, to, we have to sing his praise this morning. It's just the message, the songs, it's just a praise time morning. So I want to know this morning, are you a thankful people this morning? What are you thankful for this morning? I know there's at least one person in here who's got a praise. Mr. Craig. Want to tell everybody you want me to? Uh, that'd be your daughter, Craig. Amen. 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 So I know so Craig and Marianne are praising God and another granddaughter. Brings, brings them up to two granddaughters and a grandson. That day ain't going to be spoiled at all. Uh, anybody else got anything they'd like to praise, like to praise the Lord for this morning? morning. For that as well, well, others. others. You all said a hearty amen, amen so you all have that thing to have that be praised for Jesus for. Susanna. Susanna. <laughs> Just a matter of getting get there. there. Uh, uh, so, so we're praising the Lord for that. that. Susanna, we don't, I won't get a phone call from Susanna, from Susanna on a Sunday morning saying, can somebody come pick me up? Stella. Say that again, I can't hear you. You, Daddy, Daddy has some place to stay. stay. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the joys of, as we approach Christmas is it's so much easier to practice God's presence that has been with us in thought and deed more often. It just makes it easier. 
Remembering why, why we celebrate, celebrate right? right? By the By way, way Christmas, Christmas is just, just a prelude. prelude. The main Christmas event is still to come. Yeah. You know, you know Christmas, Christmas time uh, has, has a lot, lot of people. I'm going to ask you to stand up. While you stand up, I'm going to talk. Uh, Christmas time has a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Christmas time has a lot of people asking a lot of questions about, well, what is the true meaning of Christmas? Heard on the radio this week uh, that idea of more and more and more people are seeking what Christmas is all about. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people out there to tell them that it's not about family, it's not about this, it's about a Savior who was born. Because we're all no good, rotten, dirty sinners and we need saving. So there may be people that you come into contact with this week that ask, what child is this? our God is. He is Christ the King. And if we truly step back and we think about this, if we truly step back and we think about exactly who God is, there is only one response for us. And that is to look at other people and say, behold our.
here's what I would like you to do. I want you to find somebody to say hi to. And I want you to say hi to them. And I want you to try to brighten and encourage their day for about two minutes, okay? And if you are four, five, six, or seven, you are dismissed at this point for junior church. Hi, J hi, John. Get in there. Next one. Stay there. Okay, just a long time. All right, I give you an inch, you take a mile. Well, thank you, Rosie. Appreciate it. All right, how many of you like games? All right, we're going to do a little uh, game this morning. Anybody notice the title of my message this morning? Christmas song. Christmas is known, if for nothing else, by its music. Um, there's a reason that we sing certain songs we do, right? Uh, I said something last week about, it's Christmas time, why are you glad? And somebody up front said, Christmas music, right? Uh, two things to me that uh, our culture loves about Christmas. Number one is Hallmark movies. I'm going to get my Hallmark movie bashing in while I can. It just feels good to be back. Uh, and number two is Christmas music. I mean, you go down on the square during the day, you're going to hear Christmas music blaring. You turn to any radio station, what are you going to hear? Christmas music. So let's play a little game this morning. Who says church can't be fun? Okay? So here we go. Uh... Uh, I, I, we're going to play a little Name That Tune. A little Name That Tune. Okay? Uh, I, I've got just a few down here, and I'm hoping I can come up with more off the top of my head that, you know, try to make it tough for you. Uh, and maybe I'll even hum a few bars. I don't know. Well, well I, I'm kind of shooting this from the hip. This was an idea I had last night as I was about ready to hit my pillow hit the head. So, you know, here we go. Uh, here we go. And it might not be from the beginning of the song either. So here we go. Ready? Um, come, they told me. Yeah, there's only, by the way, there is only one, one good version of that song. One. I have never found an, a, another version that works other than the Four King of Country version. Go look it up on YouTube. It's pretty, pretty spectacular. Uh, just type into YouTube, Four King of Country, Little Drummer Boy. It is a, it's the only version there is. Okay, just saying. Uh, I hate the song otherwise. It's the hap, happiest season of all. What's the name of that song? Andy Williams. I stumped you already? Yes, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, let's see. I'm going to save that one. Um. We've got a, a lot, of, we, we've got one about, um, you, you know, uh, uh, it's a happen holiday. There's another one for you. 
rocking around her Christmas tree, right? Uh, obviously. Uh, uh, chestnuts roasting over an open fire. Christmas song, okay. Or uh, uh, anybody, uh, bonus points to anybody who s knows who sings it. <laughs> I agree. Ah, uh, Nat Cole. The only reason I know that is Mercy Me's got a really, really cool song called Christmas Time Again. It's kind of like this Elvisy type thing, and they reference it. That's the only reason I know that, right? Um, the best way, uh, if I give that away, uh, and he shall reign forevermore. Messiah, she just covers all things. Specifically, though, that's part of what we call the Hallelujah Chorus. Only way to hear that is instrumental and mm, turn it up and just enjoy, like, seriously. There's only a few things at Christmas, like uh, Hallelujah Chorus and Sleigh Rider, the only two Christmas songs that you shouldn't have the words for and just let the brass play it because it just sounds amazing. Uh, but we're obsessed, okay, have I proved my point that we're obsessed with Christmas music? Shoot, you go to Family Life Network's uh, online radio streams, they have two that are dedicated to Christmas. Not just during December, literally all year round. By the way, I think we should institute a new hunting season. Any device that plays Christmas music before Thanksgiving should just be shot. I also, I love my Christmas music, but I like it in small doses. Christmas time is a time of, of song, and here's the thing. We need to be living our lives. We need to, yeah, we need to be living our lives as a Christmas song. A Christmas song of joy. Luke chapter 1, please. Luke chapter 1. We will get to Luke 2, but that's next week. And then we'll go to Matthew in the end of the year, and then we're done. So just, uh, I'll give you a brief little outline of where we're going, right, for the next three, three, four weeks. Um, this week we're in Luke 1. Next week we'll be in Luke 2. The week after what will be, I think it's Matthew 2. Maybe Matthew 1, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then the beginning of year, the year, the first Sunday of January, January 3rd, I believe it is, we will have our uh, typical uh, state of the church address, as, as a friend of mine has nicknamed it, and I'm going to nickname it as well, that... Uh, where you'll get, we'll get the new word for the year, the new passage of scripture, and we're actually going to stick with it this time. Uh, but that's, Lord willing, where we're headed, what we're doing. Now you know my sermon plans, and you can hold me to it for the next four weeks, three weeks. Fair enough? Okay. Christmas song. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I know our text says 25 to 56, but we're not really going to look at 26 to 56. Uh, we're going to read some of the text of Scripture. Don't worry. But let's summarize the background information so you know why we're going to look at what we look at. Okay? We're going to look at this morning uh, uh, what is called Mary's song. Or uh, other people, sometimes you might run across it as called the Magnificant. The Magnificant. And it's called that because in Latin it's the, the first phrase has the idea of, the, of magnets and, or magnet, magnitude. Um, so, verses 26 all the way down to verse 46 is the story of, of this young girl. By the way, she, Mary was probably only like 14, 15 years old, okay? They got hitched early. Some people say, I got married really young. I got married when I was 20, almost 21, okay? I did not get married early. They got married early, Okay? Let, let's put this into perspective. Our teenager, Anna, in the back is an old spinster by now. Okay? Uh, Maddie is becoming ripe for marrying age. Okay? It's just the way they did it. So uh, she is engaged to a betrothed. There's a difference in, in the culture of the time. She's betrothed, which is almost basically engaged. It's like a pre-engagement engagement. Got that? Okay. She's betrothed to this guy named Joseph who was probably anywhere between 21 and 45, somewhere in there. Old, young, double standards, I understand, just 
go with it, okay? It was the culture of the day. Uh, she's probably doing some sort of household chores. Out pops this familiar face named Gabriel. We talked about him a little bit last week with Zachariah. Gabriel's also showed up in front of Daniel, and uh, he, his name keeps coming up throughout the text of Scripture, okay? He's an important messenger. He's a trusty messenger of God. He shows up, and he looks at Mary, and he says, Fear not, blessed are you among women. Okay, I'm a visual guy, right? We've, we've established this. I like to imagine Scripture in my head. So in my head, she's like brooming the floor or, or tending to something. I don't fire. I don't know. She's doing something, right? Meaning old household chores. I don't know. She's doing this, that, the other thing. And as she's doing it, boom, pops this guy. She screams. And she's like, oh, fear not. Blessed are you among women. Just how my mind works, guys. Okay? You're going along with the ride for me. Uh, verse 29, but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And you will reign forever? See? Behold our God's even a Christmas song. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin now? I'm just Pause here. So Mary asked, okay, how is this all going to work? There's a direct contrast, though, to Zechariah. Zechariah was like, how can this be? Because, right? So is Mary faithless just like Zechariah? I, I don't think so. Because the way she phrases the question, she phrases the question of, okay, I believe that this is how this is going to, that this is what you say is true. But, my husband and I haven't done the hokey pokey yet. That's what it's all about. Uh, right? I got to diffuse the situation somehow. Uh, now all the kids are going to be like, what is Pastor talking about? Uh, ask your parents. Uh, got to love Christmas time, right? So she asked this question and the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And then Gabriel gives her a sign of that this will all come to true. Both Zechariah and Mary got signs. Zechariah got plagued with mutinous for nine months. Mary got told that Elizabeth, her elderly cousin, was with child. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be a, to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Notice how quickly Mary just accepted this. Okay? That's important for what we're going to talk about in a minute. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, of, uh, in the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. John the Baptist is who that baby is. Leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Again, Elizabeth refers back to the fact that she accepted it. And we get done with this. And this is, this is Mary's response. And it's this beautiful, poetic, joyful song. Okay? Joyful song. And I'm going to forewarn you guys, okay? I'm probably not going to share anything with you this morning that you probably already haven't heard. Okay? That doesn't mean you get to tune out. But I don't want you to be saying, oh, pastor's going to show me some brand new thing. No, 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 no. I want you to realize something here, guys. God has got a plan. And God has planted within us as Christians joy. 
And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. That's where it gets its name, the Magnificat. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And he, holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Most likely Mary stayed with her until John the Baptist was born. Out came John the Baptist and off went Mary back home. Boy, what a time. Relatives really know when to get, to get lost, you know. But here's the thing, a Christmas song, our lives need to be a Christmas song. A Christmas song that is filled with joy. Why? Why should our lives be a Christmas song of joy? Here's the first reason. Because God is a personal God. God is a personal God. When I was getting, uh, preparing this message this week, I don't know why, but that just wrecked me, <laughs> right? Think about that. Our God, the God of the universe, is a personal God. Look at this with me. Verse 46, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in the Lord, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For now, for behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Right? Mary understands that God is doing something for her personally. Excuse me. Guys, this has been an unordinary year. And in an unordinary year, in a not so ordinary Christmas, our lives need to be a Christmas song filled with joy. Because God has done stuff for us. For you. Question for you. What has God done for you? What has he personally done for you? Not for the person sitting next to you. Not the person who's socially distanced from you. What has God done for you? Because our God is a personal God and he has done things for you. All right. You ready for the open and honesty train this morning? You're going to learn sides of your pastor you wish you didn't know. Uh, this whole year has been... Um, very interesting for me, to say none the least. I've never led a church through COVID before. <laughs> um, I've never gotten a son before either. I know that the Lord has blessed me, right? But I know me, so I think I, I, I know me well enough to know that I this is kind of one of those things for everybody. I know my tendency to downplay the gifts that God has given me in my own life. The way that's looked this year for me, is late, at least lately, has been, I wonder what things would have looked like if God would have given me my son and my dad was still around. Right? What am I doing though? I'm downplaying the gifts that God has given me. But you're all thinking, but Pastor, that's perfectly natural. No. <laughs> yeah, it may be natural, but that shouldn't be what I should be focusing on, guys. What have you been downplaying in your life that God has given 
you this year. Okay, I didn't write this on your note sheet, but I don't know why I'm doing this, but Holy Spirit's doing something, I guess. I want you to take your note sheet, because most of you write note sheets, and some of you don't, and that's okay. Like, I, I don't want anybody to ever feel like I'm forcing them to write a note sheet. But if you are one of those note takers, okay, I want you to do this. I'm, gonna, I'm going to have you write something that probably most of you don't agree with, okay? 2020. Write this. Top of your page. <laughs> Okay, 2020 has been good to me. Whether you agree with that statement or not, that statement is true. You know how I know that? You know how I know 2020 has been good to, to you? How 2020 has been good to me? Because my God is good to me. My God, our God, is good to me on a personal level. I don't know why, the, the, literally on as I started planning Christmas, told me I was preaching the Magnificat. I always avoid this passage like the plague because like I hate I'm not a poetry guy, right? I was not writing poems for Amy, and if they did, they sounded like roses are red, violets are blue. You're, you know, your hair looks beautiful, uh, would you? You know, something stupid like that, <laughs> which I'm sure she said no. Uh, but so many times we take, our, we take the things that God gives us for granted. We're like a farmer who was a creaster. You know what a creaster is? Christer means is, is somebody who comes twice a year, Christmas and Easter. Okay, he's a Christer. I love Christers because <laughs> uh, that's an opportunity. Uh, so he, he decided to do his civic duty. He left the cows in the barn. Uh, didn't really mind feeding them. Went to church. You know, and this this pre pastor was preaching and he was preaching out of Isaiah chapter 1 which says the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib but Israel does not know doth not know me this is why we don't use King James here guys uh, my people doth not consider Isaiah is basically saying man is dumber than animals because they don't realize what's going on that same farmer went home, went back out to the barn, looked and fed his cows, and his cow kind of went up and licked him, licked his arm. And all of a sudden, that man knew exactly what was wrong. He said, how much more has my God done for me? And I haven't given him the praise and the honor that he's due, given him the place in my life that he's due. And my cow is happy to see me when I feed it. How much more thankful, how much more joyful should I be? Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We should praise God for all the wonderful things that God has done for us. Whether that feels like it's a normal year, whether that feels like it's 2020, whether that feels like it's COVID or not, it has been, God has been good to you. Our lives need to be a Christmas song of joy that magnifies God. Because our God is a personal God. Our God has been good to us. Mary changes her tune here in verse 50. And his mercy is for those. So the first, these first three verses, Mary's like praising God because of what God has done for her personally. The next three verses, God, she praises God for what God is doing not only for her, but also for those. She identifies herself with a group of individuals, right? We're going to call them the redeemed, being those that have a 
relationship with God at this point in time. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. See, here's the, other, the next reason why our lives should be a Christmas song of joy. Is this. is because of God's mercy. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength of his... And she, she kind of then goes and, and, and shows how God has been merciful. His mercy is for those... Uh, verse 51, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estates. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. She's like, God literally turned the thing. I almost named this point because God's illogical. Right? In our quiet time, I've been doing uh, Luke. We've been going through Luke. Was it Luke? I don't know. But we've been going over like the life of Jesus. And uh, this theme kept coming up of, of making the humble, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And I'm like, when I read this, I'm like, Mary got that. Do you see that? Mary got the program before the program was even here. Because God's program has been consistent throughout time. Faith in God. That's his program. His mercy for us. Let me ask you this question. How's God been merciful to you this week? How has God been merciful to you today? How has he strengthened you with his arm? Uh, here we go, my first dad illustration. Just crossing off the box here, right? Um, this morning, Abel woke up at like 6.30. I didn't even want to be up at 6.30, right? Um, and so, you know, we didn't want to just let him down and play because then he's going to be a crank for when he's in nursery, you know? <laughs> Makes sense, right? The earlier they get up, the earlier they get cranky. Haven't been a parent long, but I've learned that. So I went in and I just picked him up and I sat, him, sat down with him in a rocking chair and we just kind of rocked, right? And he, he, he was, I think, falling asleep because he kind of just went, boom, right? But my arm was there and it caught him, right? It caught his head. How has God caught your head? That's, that's not my illustration, that's hers. That's Mary's, right? Do, do you see it? I don't want you to take my, like, my words have no power. His words do. He has shown strength with his arm. How's he shown you his strength? His mercy this week. He brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the humble. He filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away. Reminds me of a story I've heard of President Calvin Coolidge. How many of you have ever heard of President Calvin Coolidge? Okay. He, you know, he was a president back before they, you know, had all these mumbo jumbo security measures and stuff like that. And he was in a hotel one night and he was awoken by some rustling. That rustling was a burglar who was in the president's hotel room rustling through his pants for his wallet. And President Coolidge had a, a, a pocket watch, right? They didn't wear watches like we do now. They, the gentleman's watch was a pocket watch, right? I can never pull a pocket watch off. Um, but that gold chain had some value to him, right? It was his dad's or something like that. And so he, he flat out says, hey, don't take the gold chain. That was, you know, that's important to me. And in the pitch dark... President Coolidge has a conversation with somebody who is robbing him in the middle of the night. And he looks at him, and through the course of discussion, he finds out that this, this burglar is a college student who didn't have enough room, money to pay for his hotel room, let alone the bus ride back home. 
So the, President Coolidge grabbed his wallet from the young man, pulled out 32 bucks, handed it to him, and said, here, have at it, go home. And when the guy tried to persist, like, I can't do that, I can't do that, right? He's like, well, don't look at it as, as, as me, you robbing me. Don't look at it as a gift. Look at it as a loan. By the way, <laughs> history has showed us the loan was paid back, ironically. <laughs> and he gave it to the young man. And he looked at him and he said, young man, I also want to advise you, however you got into this room, go back the same way. The way you don't get caught by the Secret Service. And some of you are like, okay, that was mercy, guys. And if a president can do that, can show mercy in that capacity, how much more can our God show mercy to us? Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself, as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Oh, that was the wrong one, but that works. God, I love it when God reorganizes my sermon and stuff for me while I'm preaching. His mercy, guys. We need to be praising God because of the mercy that he has shown us. Uh, I, there's a, a song that I was listening to a CD once and a, a song popped on it. And literally the, the chorus goes, my Lord, he's been good to me. So good to me. My Lord has been so good to me. It's like the whole chorus. But it's true. His mercy is upon us. His mercy is there for us. And it's there every day, every hour, every minute. Because here's the fact of the matter. You know Jesus as your Savior. His mercy has been showed upon you because we're all no good, rotten, dirty sinners. Romans 3.23 makes that pretty clear. Or Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, we deserve, right? Dan gave me my paycheck this morning, right? For our deeds, even the good ones, right? We deserve death. We deserve to be sent to the lake of fire someday. We deserve to be sent to hell and then the lake of fire, right? It's what we deserve. But God, who is rich in mercy, sent Jesus at Christmas. Why we celebrate Christmas? So he could live a perfect life for 33 years, die on a cross, that he might take the subs, he might be our substitute text elsewhere in scripture we, we uses this great big word propitiation for our sins propitiation when you boil it down to it means substitute that he would intervene and if you know Jesus guys you should have joy because your sins are forgiven here's the last reason 50 54 He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary understood, okay, that this was all in a fulfillment of prophecy and that God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. Mary understood that. May 7th was the day that Roger Sims was discharged from the Army. He couldn't get a bus, so he decided to hitchhike his way home. Carrying his heavy suitcase and in his Army uniform, he flashed uh, on an oncoming car. It was a luxurious black Cadillac. So he didn't really expect the guy to stop and, and pick him up, but he did. And after talking about... Uh, many things uh, he found out that this guy's name is Hanover and he was headed to Chicago so it was along the way and he's like I have business there well Roger after talking about many things was a Christian felt that he needed to share with this 50 some odd guy Jesus 
He needed to share Jesus with him. But he kept putting it off, and when he was finally 30 minutes from his house, he realized it's now or never. So Roger cleared his throat and said, Mr. Hanover, I would like to, t like to talk to you about something very important. He then proceeded to explain how his life has been changed by Christ, the way of salvation, and finally asking Mr. Hanover if he would like to accept and receive Jesus as his Savior. And to Roger's surprise, the man pulled over to the side of the road. He's thinking, I'm getting kicked out of the car. Or worse. No. Instead, the businessman bowed his head and prayed to accept Jesus as his Savior. He looked at Roger and said, thank you. This is the greatest thing, the greatest thing that anybody has ever done or that has ever happened to me. Five years, so he went and dropped them off. And five years went by. Roger went off, got married, had a couple of kids. And uh, he was packing for a suitcase to go on a business trip to Chicago. When, as he was packing, out fell Mr. Hanover's business card. He's like, I can't tell you. He's like, there's no way he probably works there anymore. He's, he's, he's an older man by now, he, he, but I'll, I'll try. So he did. He looked up Hanover Enterprises, the company that Hanover worked in, and, and uh, he looked, went into the receptionist and asked if he could see Mr. Hanover, and the receptionist said, that's impossible, but you can see his wife. Well, he went in, and he was a little confused, and as he was going in, he was ushered into a lovely office and found himself facing the woman in about in her 50s, and he assumed the wife of Mr. Hanover. Roger then told after the, this one woman asked how she, he knew her husband, he simply said, he simply told her about how he had picked him up. He was just a hitchhiker. And the, man's, the woman looked at him and said, when? When was that? It was May 7th. The day I was discharged from the army, he said. And he went on to tell about how Mr. Hanover had accepted Jesus as his Savior. And as soon as she, he said that, this woman began to weep. Roger surprised, she said, I had prayed for my husband's salvation for years, and I believed wholeheartedly that God would save him. So Roger asked, where is your husband? She said, he's been dead for five years. After he dropped you off, he was in a car accident. He never made it home. And I thought God never kept his promise. So I have gone off and I have lived my own way and not followed the way that God would have me to live because I believe God didn't keep his promise. But God is a God who keeps his promises. Promises like he would never leave you nor forsake you. Albeit that's a bad verse to prove that. The fact that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We must have joy. We need to praise God because he keeps his promises to us. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Okay. It's Christmas time. And we love our Christmas songs. You love your Christmas songs. Don't, don't deny it. You do. But the real question is this. Will you let your life be a Christmas song of joy? Not because of what's happening in your life. Because let's be honest, this is not our average Christmas. Our joy... By the way, it's not happiness. They're two different things. Okay? Our joy is not happiness. But our joy is steeped in the fact that Jesus died. The fact that Jesus is merciful. The fact that Jesus is personal. The fact that Jesus keeps his word. And for that, we can have joy. 
song I learned as a young boy was this, was I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Here's the problem. Too many Christians have the joy down, 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 down in their heart. And they never let it out. But we are to be Christians who are to be joy-filled because of God, because of what God has done for us, because God is for us and not against us. But too often, especially I feel like this year, we as Christians are hanging our heads because of what we've lost, forgetting about what we have gained. Well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do that. Well, I can't, 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 can't. It doesn't matter about what you can't do. It's about what's been done. It's about the joy we can have with God first and foremost. Mary got news that literally turned her world upside down. She ended up being ridiculed. Her betrothal, her, her, Joseph, I don't think you understand it. Joseph could have had Mary killed. Killed. This literally was earth shattering news. But what do we see? How does she respond? She responds magnifying God because of the joy that he placed there, not because of her circumstances. So live your life as a Christmas song of joy despite your circumstances. Because circumstances should never adjust, they should never guide a Christian's life. Only God should. But too often, again, our circumstances come back and they hamper our joy. And they hamper our praise. They hamper us magnifying the Lord. So will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you because you know us personally. I thank you because you have loved us enough to send your son to die for us. Father, I ask that we would live our lives filled with joy. The joy that only you can offer. Jesus, I just ask that uh, as we leave this morning, that our lives would be filled with joy. That we'd be like a Christmas song. Full of joy, full of hopefully magnifying your great name. I'm going to ask that you stand. I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, demonstrate some of that joy that you have. I'm going to ask that you sing with, with uh, me. Not about Christmas. But at the heart of Christmas. The goodness of God. Um
bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. There's growth groups tonight. There's youth group tonight. And there's Bible study on Tuesday. I hope to see you at one of them. And if not, have a great week.